Welcome to our special 45 minute reset. We'll start with movement and then we'll have a little bit of philosophy and 20 minutes of meditation. So to begin, take a quarter turn to your left and gently start to stretch out on the mat. We're coming face down onto the belly. Stack the hands, let the elbows come wide. Bring the forehead to the back of the hands. And just start to connect with your breath flow. And bring some extra awareness to your chest and your arms and your shoulders and make any small adjustments that help you relax a little bit more. Make sure you can breathe into the front of the body, the back of the body, the sides of the body. And just take a few three-dimensional breaths, letting the lungs expand in all directions. Gently rock the forehead from side to side and just notice the sense of massaging through the craniofascia. Imagine the thoughts just starting to melt out of the forehead, creating physical space and energetic space inside. And then come to center. Swap hands so the other hand is on top. Replace the forehead and then take a moment to notice your hip crease. Let the pelvis get really heavy so that the front just drops a little closer towards the mat and keep that connection as the knees slowly bend. So try to prevent the hips from flexing as the knees bend. And then start to make some circles with the feet and just notice as the feet come towards the hips a sense of the quads stretching and then the feet go to one side and then extend away and then to the other side and make sure the knees and the hips gently follow the feet so there's no sense of twisting in the knees we're just starting to massage the joints of the ankles, the knees, the hips go the opposite direction. And let these circles be as tiny or as large as feels constructive to you. Start to notice how the movement of the feet translates all the way up even beyond the low back. You might experience the torso gently rotating from side to side and the stabilization that occurs in the shoulders so you don't fall over. And just come to center. Imagine the feet like a drawbridge and your hamstrings are the strong chain preventing the drawbridge from falling down. Slowly let that chain lengthen so that the feet make their way back to the floor really dramatically and see if you can witness this eccentric contraction across the back of the body as the feet lower. And then reverse that motion. We'll just do that a couple of times. So imagine the back line of the body slowly shortening to bend the knees, letting your very heavy feet slowly come any amount 
towards the hips and then allow the drawbridge to start to go back down. Next time, the tops of the toes connect with the earth. Stay there. Let the feet come just a little bit wider. Reach the hands forward and then start to drag the hands back. And as you drag the hands back, just notice the sensation in the triceps and underneath the shoulders of the arms and shoulder girdle connecting with the torso. The body can lift up just a little bit. Take a breath through the front of the body. Let the whole front of the body lengthen. And then exhale, set everything back down. Let the hands relax and then repeat. So they stay where they are, but isometrically drag the hands back. Feel the back of the arms and the back of the shoulders. Engage and let the whole front of the body lengthen with your inhale. And do this one more time on your own and make sure to release the effort as the forehead comes down and then re-engage really softly so there's no strain in arms or shoulders and the next time you recline extend the left arm gently push into the right hand rolling on to the left side and just take some little rolls front and back massaging the left side of the body connect with your breath and let everything soften and then gently start to bend the knees bringing the heels in line with the hips bring your top hand to your hip crease and keep your pelvis as it is, but just start to lift the right knee. The ankles will stay together and the knee might not lift very high, that's fine. Just take a couple of these little pulses to wake up the outside of the hip. And the next time the knee lifts, pause there and imagine there's a door right by your feet and you want to slowly and very quietly shut the door with the right foot so let it extend and reach out and just try to close the door feel the leg reaching almost out of the hip socket and then bend the knee again and set it back to where it came from and just do that a couple of times just moving nice and easy letting the right side of the body expand and then letting it soften and melt and the next time the leg extends we'll add on a little bit um, and these movements should be really tiny but just start to circle the thigh in the hip socket and make sure there's no tension no strain you can bend the knee as much as feels good and just imagine you're warming the hip socket from every direction. Go the opposite direction. You can play with extending the leg as, the, as you externally rotate and then bringing it back in. And then let's all extend the leg and very slowly control the way down so you feel the the lovely warmth on the hip socket and then relax the right leg down stretch the right arm overhead breathe into the right side of the body and then we'll do that exact same sequence on the other side so roll over center drag the left hand back and push into the left hand to roll onto the right side of the body we'll start with just those gentle rocks forward and back and just try moving a little slower than you're used to maybe even a little smaller than you're used to and see if you can actually feel more as you do this more love and support on that outer hip on the shoulder just massaging the whole right side of the body and then pause Bend the knees, drag heels in line with hips, bring the top hand 
to the hip crease. Keep the pelvis where it is. Keep the heels together and slowly start to lift the top knee. And then lower it back down. And just take a couple of these clamshells. And if you're not sure where to feel it, you can actually bring your hand to the back of the hip and notice those muscles really lightly engaged. They're not the muscles on the surface. They're a little deeper in. The next time the knee lifts, pause there and now shut the door with the left leg, slowly extending it out, pushing. And then go back the way you came. And you can always set the leg down if it feels tired um, or keep it lifted if you're wanting a little more fatigue, a little more work. It's gentle both ways. And the next time the leg extends, keep it lifted but bend the knee and just start to explore a little bit of circling in the hip. And everything you do should feel really good, should feel really supported. And keep the pelvis stable so the pelvis is unmoving, only the thigh bone moves. Go the opposite direction and feel free to add in some extension of the leg as you circle. And then let's all extend the leg and take three slow counts to lower the left leg to melt over the right. And then fan the left arm overhead and just breathe into the left side of the body. Return to the belly, drag the hands back and push into the hands. Coming up to tabletop position, walk the hands underneath the shoulders and just make some big circles with the hips. And then keep walking the hands in towards the knees. Tuck the toes under and push down into the knees and the tuck toes to slowly rise up to kneeling. Imagine there's a big, thick, heavy rubber band in the front of the left hip. Grab it with the right hand and stretch the rubber band up and back so you feel the resistance across the front of the body. And take a couple of these pulls, kind of like starting a lawnmower. It's okay to let the hips flex a little bit as the hand comes back down. And try to notice the sense of the whole body opening with a lot of support. The next time you open, pause there and just take one expansive breath, flip the palm face up. And then palm face down, slowly lower the arm and we'll do the second side. So left hand to right hip and just take a couple of pulses. If you would like to sync this with the breath, try exhaling as you start the lawnmower. <laughs> and the next time the arm lifts, pause there, palm face up, take an expansive breath into the front and the back of the body. And then flip the palm and slowly let it float down. Place the hands in front of the knees and start to roll over the feet, coming into a little ball. The head can tuck a little bit and then walk the hands in even more. Start to expand the body so the hips lift, deep bend in the knees, coming into a, a comfortable forward fold with the body draped on the thighs and just sway the hips from side to side. Take a couple of breaths into the back of the body. And then use your hands to slowly walk up the legs. Make sure the neck and spine feel supported as you do this. Keep breathing. And then once you come to equilibrium at the top, just pause for a moment, close the eyes and notice the sensation of being upright with all the awareness you've built through our sequence so far. And let's just go for a little meditation walk. Just um, you'll even go off your mat a little bit and start to take the consciousness you've cultivated around your space.
And just notice any sense of support in the joints, any gentle swinging in the arms, and how the breath fills the inner space of the body. Make your way back towards your mat in the same position that you left, but walk forward a little bit. So we'll meet in the middle of the mat. And then um, in va uh, imagine the rubber bands are now on the feet. Grab those tight, heavy rubber bands and start to pull them forward and up, lengthening the whole front of the body. And then as the body starts to neutralize, let the right knee lift and drop the hands. Make a little circle with the right ankle. Find your drishti. And then point the right toe. Slowly set the right foot forward. Bend the left knee. And start to drag the right foot back as the hands float forward, setting up your Virabhadrasana. One inch the left foot over to the left so you've got a nice wide stance. And let the whole front of the body start to lengthen. You can bend the knee a little bit. And then exhale, extend the front leg, float the arms down, and move at your own pace. Each inhale, fill up like a balloon expanding. And then each exhale, just soften and melt. And the next time you fill up, pause there, shift the weight forward, and slowly start to spring the right knee forward and up. Take a moment to find your balance. And then lower the arms to the horizon. Find a drishti. And just start to twist the hands over to the right. And then as you twist the hands over to the left, let the right knee open. And repeat this a couple of times so the hands and knee oppose each other, waking up both sides of the core. And the next time the you twist, place the right foot in front of the left. The right toes turn out just a little bit. Bend the right knee ever so gently and let the whole left side of the body open for Krishna pose. Take a breath here. And then take some bounces. So the front leg extends, the arms come to T, and then the front knee bends and you side bend. And start to get this sense of shifting the weight into the back foot. And eventually, when you feel up for it, um, let the front leg float for just a moment and set it down under the right hip. Pause for a moment and just notice the sensations in the right side of the body. We'll repeat that same sequence on the left in a moment. And to begin, grab the rubber bands that are on the ankles. Start to stretch and pull them forward. Feel the whole front of the body lengthen. And now arms down, left knee floats. Find your drishti, circle your left ankle. Connect with your breath flow. And on your next exhale, slowly start to extend the foot forward. Toes touch down. Bend the right knee as a base of support. And sweep the arms forward as the left leg reaches back and to the left just a little bit. Inch the right foot nice and wide to the right. And let the front of the body unfold. In your own breath, the exhale will melt the arms down, the leg can extend, and each inhale get as expansive and bright as possible. Continue with your own breath. And the next time you're in Virabhadrasana 1, shift the weight forward, spring the left foot forward, and Bring your hands to the horizon. Start to twist towards the left and then twist towards the right. And just take a couple. It's okay if they're wobbly. You can set the foot if you ever need to find your equilibrium. The next time the knee twists to the right, set the left foot down. Let the left toes turn out any angle that's comfortable on that left hip. And then sweep the right arm up and let the right side of the body start to expand. Bend the left knee. Take a breath here. 
And then as you exhale, kick into the left foot and float your arms to T. At your own pace, the inhale will expand the right side of the body. And the exhale will help you come back to center with control. As you do this, start to notice the sense of the weight shifting into the back foot as you come to T. And the next time you do that, see if you can hover the left foot, find some hang time maybe, and then set the left foot down underneath the left hip, palms down, slowly float the arms down, interlace the hands behind the back, heavy knuckles, and just let the heart melt open. Sometimes people arch their back a lot here, so be mindful of the spine staying long and the pelvis staying heavy. Take a breath into the heart. And then bend the knees and start to drape the body over the thighs. Let the hands just rest at the low back. Let the head hang as long as that doesn't feel strainy in the neck. And then let the hands unclasp, touch the hands down, and slowly walk the hands forward until you can lower the knees and untuck the toes, flatten the hips to the heels, and just pause for a moment at kneeling. Turn to face me. And if it's not comfortable to sit on the heels, you can um, sit on a block or a blanket. We won't be here too long. Let the knees come a little bit wider so you have a big base of support. And just make some gentle circles with the spine. And as you do this, notice a sense of massaging the shins and the calves and the back of the hips all as they touch different parts of your body. You can even use your hands to massage your quads a little bit and go the opposite direction. And then let your movements get smaller and smaller, but enjoy the pathway. And eventually we'll land with an upright spine, but imagine you can still feel a sense of movement. It's just happening outside of the physical realm. And just take a few deep breaths from the centered position. And bring hands to heart. And I am going to swap with Satyam and he's gonna take over for philosophy and meditation. So grab a cushion, sit however would be most comfortable for So there's a really beautiful Sanskrit word uh, that's, that means the nectar of awareness that is in your heart all the time. And this is the word Turiya Rasa. Turiya Rasa. And so Turiya means the uh, awareness, um, the foundational, all-pervasive awareness that resides um, underneath all the fluctuations of our mind. And rasa is this uh, nectar. And the sutras tell us that when our awareness is allowed to reside very easily in the present and in our heart, that we're flooded with uh, turiya rasa, with this nectar of awareness. So sometimes it's easy to assume that this nectar um, is sort of like at the end of the rainbow, right? Or it's at the end of the week in our case, perhaps today. And, um, and that during the week, not so much nectar, but at the end of the week, yeah, there, that's where it's gonna be. Um, 
But what the sutras say is, hey, you know, at the end of your week, that relief that you feel, or maybe it's just the end of your day or the end of a project, whatever it is, that ending, that relief, it's real. But instead of just sort of letting it happen and being like, woohoo, weekend, or whatever we might do, you can actually consciously learn how to hold on to that, that relief, that nectar where your mind is sort of settling back into the heart and you can practice holding that space and in fact as yogis we're instructed by the sutras to do exactly that to hold this space of awareness at the time of entry as it says here at the time of exit so meaning at the beginning or at the end of a project or a day or a week it says this nectar of turiya thurya rasa must be properly held with full awareness so that is it is expanded into the center of these three states, of the three states of, uh, of waking life. We can talk about that another time. And when we're able to do that, it says, we become one with that nectar in all the different states of our life. So take a moment and let yourself feel the end of the week. Let yourself feel the end of your day or wherever you're at, just the, the relief that is just right there. We're all feeling it. It's there for each of us. Just let your shoulders relax. Let your jaw relax. Swallow and feel that sort of uplifting sensation through the spine. You know, it's a really good feeling. Sunset kind of experience. Whether or not the sun is setting, it's like there's that, that quality. And you can practice the slight smile. That's always just for you. But it allows you to tap into that contentment that's always just sitting there right under the surface. just allow yourself to reside in that space of relief for another moment without doing anything to it. Now perhaps the mind is already starting up, right? Already anticipating what's next. Or what's this? And that's where we have to actually practice holding this nectar. And so allow your breath flow to be smooth and even through the nose. Let yourself feel the exhale and let it be an exhale like the end of a project or the end of a week. That kind of exhale where it's slow and full and complete and then let the inhale come to you each time you allow yourself to exhale slowly and completely without any extra effort just let it happen you can feel that sense of relief and you reside there as the breath pours back in.
as you are continuing with this very simple breath based awareness you can bring the mantra so to the exhale and hum to the inhale so hum it's a very simple mantra It's repeated silently as you breathe. Maybe your mind says to you, okay, I felt the relief. I'm good now. Ready to go. Mm, that's, we're not done. Holding something takes time. Hold this space as you breathe. The space of a relaxed mind not planning our next endeavor. Each time you exhale, let yourself really experience that relief. Don't take it for granted. Actually be a part of the experience. And as you inhale, let it come to you effortlessly. You don't have to pull it in. Just drink it in. Allow the thoughts that normally occupy our mind, allow them to sink, to sink through our shoulders into our heart where they dissolve. Mm. 
your state of being is in your hands. Can you focus and find the relief that's a part of every breath, of every mantra, and hold it? The mind will give you so many reasons to throw away this nectar, to push it aside, to say it doesn't exist. But your heart is right there. You know it's there. You can feel it. All you have to do is consciously approach it with your breath. There's no denying it.
this nectar of Turiya Rasa must be properly held with full awareness so that it is expanded. For the last few minutes, hold your full awareness on the space of the heart Imagine that space full of nectar and just let it seep into the rest of your being. Across the chest, throughout the abdomen, the arms, the legs and the seat and the head. Let yourself be filled, soaked with this nectar. And just let your awareness rest a little bit longer at its source in the heart. So with this kind of practice, we can actually realize the relief we seek from the end of a day or the end of a week, the weekend. You can draw that relief into the heart of your weekend, into the heart of your life. You can bring those hands to the heart here as we come to a close and just feel that point where the hands meet at the chest. And let yourself continue to explore this, you know, throughout the weekend. And to just consciously, consciously draw that nectar into the heart of your life. Namaste. Thanks, everyone. Van, Sammy. Have a great weekend. Good to see you. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>